Hello everyone, my name is Pella St. Moon and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 8. A couple of episodes back, Impulse had hunted for a bunch of these Moonkins around the server. Do you guys remember he traded them for his, uh, his redstone box? And I think now that Halloween is pretty much well and officially over at this point, I thought I would kind of just start off this episode by just probably just going around and picking up a whole bunch of these because we're always trying to clear some lag out of Fodum and he only found 32 out of 47. So there is still a bunch kind of lying around. I'm not really sure why there is a hole in the bottom executive garage, but I guess there's a hole in the bottom executive garage. I did have a few in my shop as... <laughs> His goats are still here. I did have a few in my shop as well, but it looks like they have been found. However, while we're here, I'm also gonna check some diamonds. There we go, we've sold some netherite ingots, so we have another 40 diamonds in that one. Ooh, someone's been buying our name tags. Why do I feel like this is Tango from when he did the Ravager prank? prank? That, that just kind of tells me something. All of those Ravagers were named? And what's a better place to get some name tags? Padlamico. Yo! Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a shaky boy. <laughs> okay. I think that one actually, those shakes happened last episode, but we didn't really put much of an emphasis on it. But for some reason, the Hermitcraft server is shaking right now. I love the fact that it happened as soon as I zoomed into my face. Connected. Bellicent moon. Moon. Big moon. Yeah, I'm a little bit suspicious of myself, to be honest. Shakes aside, let me just check the rest of my stock real quick while the goats are screaming in the background and the cat cats are meowing. Uh, we have another three diamonds in the glass. So that is fantastic. Another 53 diamonds for the pool. Now let's keep going to collect our pumpkins. Now, I believe there also could be some on these rocks and trees because I did kind of go back here and put down a few. Oh, there we go. There's another one. Actually, speaking of it, I did put some down on uh, Scar's trees and I actually don't think Impulse got them because I asked him that day when, when he found the whole bunch of Moonkins, like, oh, wait, what kind of places did you look? And I think he, he did look around the trees, but it looks like he did miss that one. So I'm kind of also curious if he got the rest of them, plus the one that I put on Scar's wet. Aha! There we go, on Scar's wagon. So he didn't get that one either. Boop. Thank you. Honestly, I can't actually remember where I put all 47 of the Moonkins, so at this point I just have to kind of walk around Bodom until I find a whole bunch. Moon big. Moon very big. Now I did put basically at least one Moonkin in every shop, so let's have a little bit of a check in Harmless Harvests. I think I put two in here from recollection. And the other one is still here, so Impulse got one, but he didn't get the other one. There uh, should be one in here. Yep, there we go. Okay, so Impulse hasn't really been up here, which means I think there should be another another two up here. I think I did three in total, so it was pretty much the jackpot. Yep, there's another one. The Moonkin, thank you. And yep, another one up here. There we go. So there is another three. We found seven Moonkins in total, which means that's up to 41. There should theoretically be another six Moonkins around Bodom. While we're at the Moonkin thing anyway, I think it's also time to take this down. This one is very, very clearly Halloween themed and it was just a stand for any kind of like armor stand pieces, like your your head, your head wears. And I think, I think it's good to remove this one. I certainly do enjoy the fact that when the Ravagers came to say hello, they ate half of my tree. That tree has got some serious warmth. And as far as Halloween decorations go, I kind of want to leave these ones in here, like the wagon and the scarecrows or the pumpkins all around the place. It kind of just feels more farm vibey like, and it, you gotta admit, like this area looks really kind of homely and nice. So Nugget can stay here just a little bit longer, I think. What do you guys reckon? Should I remove this stuff? Let me know down in the comments below. And while we're at the lag clearing of Bodom, I think it's also time to get rid of some of the goats around Bodom as well. Because yeah, as sad as it is, they, they gotta go. They, they gotta go. I guess I kinda gotta find them first though. I know there's some around here though, I can hear them. I have found you. The rule <laughs> oh, is nervous. when you kill them, you've got to scream with them. Okay, that's, oh, that's, really? that, yeah, oh. that's the rule. Hello. Bah! Bah! Gotcha. Bah! Oh, that was a really sad one. <laughs> well, it certainly looks like Green has been doing a little bit of goat clearing of his own. Oh my word. That's now called the uh, screaming, uh, screaming, g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-g-
if there is any moonkins left and then and I, I come across them at some random time that I can just pick them up and put them away. That That's totally fine either way. Now, today is actually one of those days where it's going to be a quote unquote, not so much buildy day. <laughs> because, you know, pretty, pretty much recently we've done so much building with the base. We've kind of added on this whole section at the bottom. We did the waterfall, the terraforming down the side, all the trees. And I think it's kind of going to be an episode where we take a little bit of a break from that building. And then we maybe do some, some, you know, maybe we cause some ruckus on the server. However, before we do that, I do have a bit of a quick project in mind and something to show you guys. You ready? Look at this. I did some interior. We streamed the other day on the hammock craft and we kind of messed around with a little bit of interior and this left side now has it's now has livable space. The right side's still very much empty, but the left side is certainly getting there. So let me give you guys a short little tour about it. So immediately when you walk into the castle on the left hand side and on the left again, you have this lovely little librarian nook where you can sit and read your books and sip your tea all day. It is quite quaint and cozy and there is not much else to it, but we do have some hanging plants on the ceiling, which also raise the real estate value of the castle by quite uh, quite, quite some amount. And walking further into the lovely castle estate, we have this beautiful lounge room with a fantastic widescreen TV and some surround sound speakers on either side with plenty of storage that your heart may desire, including some lovely file cabinets, which are definitely not beehives. And to mention the sofa is quite lovely, we have even more totally not beehives on the side of it. And I think it adds quite a nice detail. Behind the library section itself, we have this lovely little sitting nook as well. In case you don't want to watch TV and you want something a little bit more quaint, you have this cute little couch area here where you can hang with your friends and stare at a painting of the Wither, which is not the monster that tries to kill you in Minecraft. Look, the choice of the paintings is an acquired taste. And moving on here into the dining room, we also have some wonderfully empty shelves. <clears throat> Uh, never mind, hold on a minute. Um, some wonderfully full shelves of assorted items. And then to the right here, we have a little kind of brewing area if the people like the coffee in the morning and they would like to sit at the table. Um, uh, and then here we have the actual table itself. And we've got some lovely dark oak wood touches, some uh, hive drained bottles from the wonderful Cleo herself, and some wonderful paintings on the wall to really bring together this little area. And unfortunately, the kitchen is uh, still to be renovated, but I'm sure that will happen in time. And that, that, that that's basically my tour, guys. <laughs> I haven't done a lot more past that exception to a few extra walls and staircases. Such as over here, I made a staircase to go down towards my little farming area, and then I'm hoping uh, eventually when I get enough snow built up and everything that I can make this feel like a full-on interior, like I'll have like an entrance into my cactus farm here and I'll make some entrances over to these farms too, or I can just move them, either one. But I think the underside of this can really incorporate my farms quite easily if I really, really want to. So that is a possible plan for the future. So before we do a little bit of shenanigans, how about we kind of work on this room together, guys? I was thinking something like a library in here that's a bit of a a bigger version of this one. So something that's really quite grandiose and just fits in here nice and snug because obviously there's no windows, it's too far down the castle. Um, so we don't really have a lot of natural lights, but I think a library could look uh, fairly nice in here. One of the first things we need to do when we approach this kind of space is we need to think about what we want in the room itself. And of course, you know, it's a library, that's, that's it in its basic form, but we also want rows and rows of bookshelves. So that's a big one that we have to think about. Plus, not only that, it would be really cool if we had a bit of a reading zone. So kind of like, I'm thinking a bit of like those really traditional libraries, you know how they have had those kind of really long tables and then the books on either side, maybe that's something that we could potentially do or just an area for them to sit in. With that in mind, the table could potentially go a, a long ways down this way, but we could also kind of properly just kind of wall this off a little bit because it's a bit of a useless nook here. And we could add a whole bunch of tables coming off this way so that we have the whole rest of this room for all of the books and the uh, the bookshelves. At the end of the day, this little area in here could also be like kind of an almost uh, hidden section that maybe people can find later on down the line. And maybe we can either hide something in there 
or I kind of had something in my mind that we could maybe play a bit of a hide and seek in the castle. At the end of the day, this place is going to be massive with the interior. Like, can you imagine the hide and seek capabilities of this place? It's the walls are made out of snow. Powdered snow exists, you know? But, you know? That could be kind of cool, just saying. We also can't be leaving this wall all snow, it kind of needs to match the the rest of the walls around the place with all the uh, the fancy quartz pattern that I have going on. There we go, that looks much better. Now the next thing we're going to do is the tables. Strip them down, realize it's probably not the right color and replace it. Strip them down again, add some cute little stairs off to the side, add another table for good measure. There's some more cute stairs off to the side. Some little chairs for people to sit in and read all their books on. You know what? Instead of like three on either side, maybe we just have two big long benches on either side. I feel like that's what traditional libraries kind of had a little bit more than the separated chairs to an extent anyway, at least what's in my mind. Okay, maybe not so much one whole big one, but what about two smaller ones? There we go. I think that kind of works out. Some trap doors on the sides for a good measure. And then maybe a few little jungle signs as side decoration, which I actually think work fairly well. Looks like a table. Now I would say the next thing we have to do is move the whole thing over by a block because there is too much space on that side. There we go. That looks a lot better. Right. The next thing I'm kind of imagining is that we do some bookshelves, either some shelves above the tables or even off to the side here. There we go, a few little bookshelves and shelving units and even some plants for good measure. And I think the next thing we should really be focusing on is also getting a bit of a trim around the ceiling. So if we go into this room over here, you can kind of see we've added a cute little jungle wood trim around the edge. And I think that can work really nicely for this area too. You can already see this looks way better than what it did before. It kind of just helps just to give the room a little bit of shape instead of just being flat in every corner. And the next thing we'll want to do is the bookshelves themselves. So just give me a little bit and I'm going to go chuck those in. Bam, we now have some bookshelves. Now, they're not exactly kind of what I pictured. I was kind of hoping for maybe, maybe even more compact and way more books. But I think at the end of the day, this does kind of work. It reaches right down to the end of the room and it has some like little signs on the side of it as well. So if you want to label any, any books with, for, with any topics for each of the shelving units, we can also do that just like a real library. But yeah, we've kind of got these. But the decorations for the library do not stop there. We are not yet done. As you can see, right by the one below us there, we have torches everywhere. This place is just, it's not lit up and we gotta fix that. One of the easiest things that we can do straight up for lighting is pretty much do what we've done in the main corridor here. We have shroom light hidden uh, somewhere. <laughs> there it is, hidden underneath the carpeted area. Uh, it's kind of like a rug that just stretches all the way down the hallway. So we're going to do the same thing right here. Kind of just sparingly just stick them every few blocks or so. And that tends to cover at least a good amount of the lighting. And you can just cover them up with the brown carpets if I can find them. There we go. So plonk, 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 plonk and then kind of just randomize it up a little bit and fill in the rest with actual wool blocks to give it a little bit of a decorative variation. All right, there we go. And just like that, we have gotten rid of all of the torches. And now this place should be pretty much mob proof, except maybe the top of those bookshelves. But I think for the most part, we are pretty good. The thing is, though, this place is still missing a little bit of detail. It's pretty already well detailed at the moment. But what we do need is some like little lamps on the tables, I reckon. And I think I might have a good idea for a potential design that we could use if we go for a wall and then a chain and then kind of top this off with some trap doors. There we go. And then hang some lanterns off it as well. Then it's kind of like one of those uh, library table lamps of sorts. Now, I thought it was originally too big when I was trying to come up with the design. But, uh, you know, once you put it on the other one, it kind of balances out, to be honest. You see, I think that looks, uh, I think that looks pretty cute. I like it. And the very last thing I just want to do is add a little bit of pot decor around the place and maybe also... Add in just a little head, stick a mushroom in the pot, and maybe a little pumpkin for good measure, because why not? I don't know. But there we go. That's that's pretty much our library. Hang on a minute. Wait, we've got one more thing. One more thing. What would be a library with some wonderful lecterns with some written books in them? Which I don't actually have. I need to go get a written book. <laughs> one moment. Okay, bump and bump. 
there we go now they have a couple of books that they can either read or write in they're just pretty much a couple of blank books for now and that can kind of tie together a library because what's a library without being able to read any books in it so this is pretty cute. Let's have a look at it from the front door, shall we? There we go. I am starting to like how this is coming together. I did add a couple little uh, little tables on the sides of the plant while I was building this. And I think it is definitely starting to come together. It is still feeling a little bit empty. That needs a proper roof on it. But overall, I think it's getting there. However, some of you guys may have noticed that after we came back from doing the library shelves, that my levels might have been just a little bit lower. I had paused mid-build to go and play a Leaf Spleef tournament that was hosted by Cub. If you guys remember uh, a few episodes or so back, we had played Leaf Spleef with Cub himself, where you kind of you throw snowballs at drip leaves and it makes people fall to the ground. Whoever is the last one standing wins. So we played it again, but this time it was with something over 10 hermits. I'm not quite sure how many people were there in total. But it, it was more than 10 hermits in that and we, we saw who came out on top at the very end. And that was a lot of fun and I will show it to you guys right now. However, the game was fairly long and to minimize as much content overlap as possible, I will give it a bit of a summarize. After the initial introductions to the game where we all say hello and then we get the rules, we all actually hopped into the arena to decide the order that we would play in and what bracket we would be placed in to start. All right, here we go. <laughs> Three, two, one, play! Whee! Go, 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 go. Oh, no! no. Oh, no. Strategic, strategic, <laughs> strategic! No! no. <laughs> this is not fine. Oh my this is God. okay. Oh, we got, we got a couple oh, people I left. Uh -oh. I need snowballs! Really I'm out of snowballs! Okay, that was... Wait, no, was it me and Falsa? Oh, no! I literally <laughs> ran in the to my house. Okay. Oh, Falsa and I died at the same time. That was great. Oh, no. Wow, that was fast. I survived close to the end, second to false. So I was placed in the tier two bracket. Pairs then proceeded to play off against each other to see who would play those in tier two to move on to the round after that. Players, are you ready? Ready? Yes. Zeta versus Pearlescent Moon. Three, two, one, split! We going! <laughs> oh my, it's actually so much harder with everyone's snowballs everywhere. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, oh. oh, oh there we go. Oh. <laughs> now, if we take a look at the little original chart here, you will see that I was destined to play either Green or Zuma. And Green actually won his round, so I was versing him in the next one. All right, Green and Pearl are both of them. All right. Swear off. We get some more snowballs. I'm Green, I can't wait to win. I'm ready. Oh, I can taste the salt. <laughs> Players, are you ready? Yeah. Ready yes. is over. Pearlescent Moon versus Green. Three, two, one, split. Let's go. Here I go <laughs> out onto the leaves. Come in for you, Waffle Boy. Oh. Watch out, Pearl. And by the way, I'm working on a new 50 Ways to Break Your Friends video. It's coming out this week. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, what? Okay. Oh, close one. One goes through. Oh, dear. Okay. I'm getting cornered. I'm kind of in the corner now. Oh. Longest round yet. <laughs> and now oh, I'm focusing. Now I'm in focus mode. Oh, no. oh, close oh, the pearl. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, oh, okay. This is the longest oh, no. match no, no, of the day. No. Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 dang it! it. Fatality. <laughs> wow, that was a very that was quite an intense round, guys. I might have to so that. after that one. Oh, it's, 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 it's G double O versus the creator in the final. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> G double O. <laughs> Of course, unfortunately, in the longest round of the game that day, I did lose and then Green went on to the final. And he couldn't properly record, so Beatup's voiced for him and it was it was it was fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. So at the end of that, Green ended up facing off with Cub, who won the other rounds. But I'm going to leave my summary here because you should check out either Cub's or Green's video to see who won. It was a lot of fun though and very enjoyable, even if we didn't win. And at the start, also, everyone would put in a prize as their entry fee, and I actually put in a netherite ingot into the pool. So maybe the winner can maybe do a bit of an upgrade to their gear now, because apparently some hermits are a little bit uh, stuck on their diamond stages. <laughs> so maybe that'll help out whoever won that round. 
But with Leaf Spleef done, we have a few extra things to get back to. Because I noticed the other day while I was doing some building that we have some pretty suspicious characters that have landed on our bases. The little orange one on Mumbo's base, you have this this blue one over here on mine. Hold on, let me get it in a full view here. There we go. Little suspicious character. Green has his in an alleyway. And Impulse has his in his like kind of a uh, couple of uh, water cooler towers here. As apparently I've heard him call them. So he's also got his own character. Now Scar did have one as well on the uh, mountains that he built. But I get the feeling I think Green has been building some sort of moon observatory over there. So it might have been removed at some point. Because I don't, I can't actually find it anymore. But these have been placed all over the server. Now we can't let someone else just have all the fun now, can we? So cheeky little character of unknown origin with their little suspicious characters. I, I see your sus prank and I raise you an upside down llama. <laughs> I think this kind of works out. If someone else wants to put little characters around the server, I'm gonna do exactly the same back, but at the end of the day, this is gonna be our little advertisement for Pad Lamaco. Who would see a cute little upside down llama like this and not want to come to Pad Lamaco? Come on, it's like it's like giving a little pet to everybody on the server. And that's exactly what I just said. We're doing it all over the server, just like the little suspicious characters. Now Bodum doesn't really need a, a llama advertisement because they're pretty much well aware of my shop, especially with the little llama hats that I have on my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around to all of the hermit spaces on the server, aside from the Bodum folk, and place these little llamas everywhere. I reckon it's time for us to hit montage mode and you know what? I'm also going to play our lovely llama song from a couple episodes back anywhere you go at the same time. Once again, big thank you to Jono for that song. It's an absolutely brilliant track and I think it's time to play it again. Let's hit the road, guys. I met a baby llama on the mountain that wandered many miles away from home. I told the llama I was just like them. You and I could use a fan. We traveled many miles across the ocean, seen wonders that few eyes have ever seen. With friendship, love, hard work, and devotion, we'll take on this barren sea. Eating grass inside a boat, sharing with the smelly goat. Don't fall out, it's hard to flow. Blame it on a fairy coat, golden city. Well, 20 hand-built llamas later and every base area of the server has a llama. And if people were living with each other, they got one between two so that I wouldn't have to build, you know, an entire uh, 26 bunch of llamas around the server. But I definitely have to say this is going to be one of my favorite ones because we went a little bit extra on Kralis's. He had a helipad here. It had nothing on it. And that was just a perfect opportunity to make the heli llama. Mhm. Mm yep, this this is this is fantastic. We did this during a stream. We built all 20 llamas on a stream and the community came up with calling this one the heli llama for some kind of llama helicopter. 
and I think it looks fantastic. It's just a really simple, small edit to the design. We can see another one over there on uh, B-Dubs' moon base, where we've just added a couple of propellers up top just to give it a little bit of a helicopter vibe. But on every llama that I have put around the server, we have a shop at Padlama Co in Botum, just in case people didn't know what Padlama Co was, and BTM to get the acronym around the place, and then uh, today, of course, because Got a shop. Got a shop for Padlama Co today, guys. It's important. I do have one more surprise for Corralis, though. You have been Lamooned. Not only has Corralis been mooned with Beatups' base all season, and now has a giant moon coming up at night time. To add some insult to injury, we now have the llama butt that faces towards Corralis' base. So, in perfect fashion, we had to make it known. Honestly, guys, this prank is, it, it's pretty harmless. It's pretty harmless. It's not intended to be anything big. If uh, any of the hermits want to remove them, that is totally fine. They can just break them down straight away and they're really small, so it doesn't take very long either. But just as a bit of uh, playing around fun and we kind of brought back a dinner bone for a little bit by turning all of these llamas upside down in every base. And I don't know. I like it. I'm happy with it. I got my cute little llamas spreading lots of love. With all of this said, guys, that is actually going to be it for today's episode. I know we didn't make like a super huge amount of progress, but I am pretty happy with what we've done so far. We did do the interior of, or more of the interior of the base today, which is looking fantastic. We also did the spleef tournament uh, with Carb and a whole bunch of other hermits. And we did our little prankage as a retaliation on the whole little sus among us characters that have been placed around the server. I don't really know who did that just yet, but maybe we'll find out in the future. With that said though guys, thank you so much for watching the video today. If you liked the video, let me know down in the comments below. And if you have any feedback for today's video, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Goodbye. Goodbye.